Hello and a very warm welcome. My name is Udo Sendaidukei and in this video I show four fantastic and very easy mixing tips. Since I invest a lot of work and knowledge in my videos and make them available, I would be happy if you give me at least a thumbs up as an appreciation and subscribe to the channel. And it would be absolutely great if you recommend my channel and videos to others. But let's get started. Sometimes it is the simple things that brings us much further and to which we pay far too little attention because of their simplicity. A fatal mistake that we can easily, easily avoid. As always in mixing, good monitoring headphones or speakers are very important. Tip number one, listen very quietly. Um, listen very quietly is because um, you need to hear all important elements if they are audible. Something like melody, rhythm and progression. Or do hi-hats or snares stand out strongly? And um, depending on the genre, is the kick still audible? So what I do, I, do the, uh, I turn the master down and shift it a little bit in, in the area where I start to hear the track. So um, let me show what we uh, want to hear, like this, for example. Okay, so now I put it down and just pay attention to it if you um, can hear everything that could be very important for the track. So it is very important to not put it up so you can um, hear everything really clear. It's um, everything about, do I hear everything? Is something standing out too strong or um, do I miss something very important? The tip number two is listen at it to a normal volume level. So that's what, that's what you're doing when you're mixing a song. So... Um, the, the, the goal here is, is the mix well balanced? Do the instruments harmonize well with each other in terms of volume and timbre? So let's hear it. And um, this is like when you listen to music in a normal volume in your room, for example, or maybe a little bit louder um, when you're doing something, but still in a, in a really normal level where you can um, talk with other people. So, and tip number three is listen to it very loud. And the very loud is, um, the very loud tip is because you have to listen to the bass sounds to the low frequencies are there too many low frequencies too deep frequencies uh, so too many low low frequencies are, tell, are there too less frequencies so if you would play this song on a party or in a club um, <laughs> will you destroy the 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 subwoofer or um, is there no uh, bass at all so just put it really loud like on, on zero dB here and listen to it carefully. And maybe if you have some um, consumer headphones with bus boost or something like that, put it on and listen to them. And if, if the bass is just distorting and, and everything doesn't sound good, you know there are too many basses. And you will notice if there, um, there should be more bass because you're missing something. So 
So these are three really easy tips and it's just moving the volume slider up and down. So and you should do that in your mix um, at a certain point all the time to just listen if everything is placed. This helps you so much and is so easy tip or technique to work with your mixes and get them in the right place. And tip number four is not really complicated, but we have to do something and I call it, um, we built a virtual speaker and this speaker is the Auratone test. Auratone speakers are recommended again and again, but not because they are overall the world's best speakers that would make the price of 300 to 400 euros look kind of strange in contrast to several thousand or euros. According to some professional mixing engineers, your Auratone speakers are, good, uh, are a good test to check how well a mix or a song works on different devices, how good it translates. Why it works so well is because these speakers serve our optimal listening area particularly well. The mids um, that we hear very well and that is the main spectrum for almost all music. Certainly this technology can't replace the speakers, but it can give you a very good idea of what it means and what it um, should sound like. Everything for this is already available in your toolset as stock plugin or as a purchase. Please keep in mind, this is only an approximation, but um, it already, ha already helps a lot. Now to the Oratone DIY preset. You need filters or EQs, which have a high pass, also called low cut, or a low pass, also called high cut, with a 18 dB, a three pole slope. And then um, you limit the frequency spectrum in the low and high end. The whole device should be switchable on and off with one click for the AB comparison. And the preset should be placed at the very end in your master chain. I do this now in Bitwig in two different ways, but um, this is rebuildable in every DAW with their onboard tools. You already have the ingredients. With Bitwig, all EQs are out for now because none of them provides an 18 uh, dB slope. If you also have no plugin or device with an 18 dB slope, then you can also take a workaround uh, as a workaround um, 24 dB, so a four pole slope. This is not quite the same, but it helps for first impression. In Bitwig, I take the letter filter. The letter filter is the only device in Bitwig that offers an 18 dB slope for high pass and low pass. Since we will need two letter filters, we need another chain device, so we only have to click once for the AB comparison. Now I load the chain device and a letter filter. And here's a little Bitwig workflow trick, how you can load multiple devices in one go. So you type in chain, click one time on chain, then I open the chain container, click here on the plus, and now I type in letter. And with the OK, I opened two devices in one go. So then we reset the letter filter immediately and set ADSR, LFO and the envelope followers uh, envelope follower to neutral so that all other settings have no effect. So either we do this with a double click, come on, or with a control click and enter zero. So the LFO is already on zero, but the envelope fo follower I click uh, left and control left click and enter zero and it's on neutral. Now we do the same with the resonance, double click or control click on the knob, um, control A for selecting all, zero, and everything is on zero. Um, then we duplicate the letter filter with control D or right click over here, duplicate. So at the first letter filter on the left, we select the high pass filter, three pole 18 dB, this is a low cut that cuts the low frequency. Then we set the filter knob to 170 Hertz. So control left click, control A to select all, 170 HZ. 
enter and you see in the info bar 170 um, hertz then we take care of the second letter filter on the right side <clears throat> Select a low pass 3 pole 18 dB over here. This is a high cut which cuts the high frequencies. We set the filter knob to 5 kHz. So control click, control A, select all 5 kHz, and it's on 5 kHz. Now the Aura Tone test preset is already. Uh, is already ready um, and we have to set in the chain device the preset name for example our tone test control a select all control c to copy it then right click on the device save preset to library control v to paste it category eq for example and then i put in the description things that i made to this preset i will show you in a second why i do this so 100 hertz 18 db a low cut and 5 kilohertz 18 db high cut so now i save that it tells me I already have this preset because I already did a tutorial or created the preset myself. <laughs> and now I have the Oraton test preset. So why I do this description before listening to the preset? If I open the browser and type in Oraton, use the presets and load no, this one, load this one. Then I see in the description in the browser what I typed in. So I already know which parameters I typed in for this preset because it can happen that I have several presets of this with different parameters and I don't have to put it in the name or something. I can really put a long description over here and I can read it over here and select it. So that's the reason why I put the description over here. So now let's get back to the test. I have my audio file and um, I put it on normal volume and I listen to the, the audio file right now and then I switch on the Oratone test and listen what happens. So you see there's a big difference um, uh, with the sound so because uh, lows and highs are missing mostly um, you hear the lows about that and the second thing is when i switch on the preset the sound is clipping but that is not the fault of the not the main fault of the preset because the preset uh, doesn't doesn't add any gain to it um, the secret because there is a gain addition to it is the lack of the low and the high frequencies and the reason is um, for that is the fletcher munson curve or you can find the the, the reason in the fletcher munson curve i did already um, a video in the sound basics you can find it on the channel about the fletcher munson curve and if you like i do another video and explain why this reduction of frequencies lead to um, clipping in the in the uh, master track or in the overall track okay so but ne uh, let's build another preset with the fx grid because with the fx grid it's a little bit easier but you have to do some things because of um, for example the last thing with the fletcher munson curve so I opened an FX grid, open the advanced view, view, click on the audio out 
button. And in the inspector on the left side, I turn off clipping. And now you heard the, or you saw that the, the clip or the, the um, audio file is clipping. And if I uh, have an, a mid-range speaker with such um, parameters like I dialed in here in the preset, um, the clipping could happen as well on the um, um, digital to analog uh, converter. So it could be that you have very harsh frequencies on such a speaker that you never heard on your um, on your DAW or on your hi-fi sound system at home. And this is a nice indication that something might be there what you want to correct. Okay, so we turned off clipping because we don't want to have additional clipping to it. Or you want to have clipping to it, then you hear it really loud and clear what, what's happening then. Okay, so then um, click on the category filter over here and drag the high pass that is um, a low cut on the left input. Let's make this a little bit bigger, like this. And on the lower left corner, set it to 3-pole, 18 dB, you remember. Then control click on the um, knob, control A to select all, 170H set, and you have um, low cut or high, part, high pass with 170 Hertz. Then drag the low pass to the output, change the pole to 3 pole, control click on the knob, control A to select all, 5KHZ, and you have a 5 kilohertz. Then you could, for example, color that a little bit so it's nicer. <laughs> and that's already it. So you can close it. Then maybe our tone test FX grid, control A, control C to copy, right click, save preset to library, like this EQ, then again, 100 Hertz, 18 dB, um, low cut, 5 kilohertz, 18 dB, I cut and then save it. It says it's already there because I already did it, but I save it again. And now you can see and hear the difference again. So these are the simple tricks or tips. If you always follow them, you'll produce better mixes in the future and have fewer unpleasant surprises when you listen to your songs on different devices. Thanks for watching and your attention. My name is still Odo Sindaiduke and if you have any questions or comments about this topic or any other topic, please let me know and leave a comment. If you find the video helpful, like, subscribe and share it with your friends or people you find interesting. Maybe they want to know about it as well. I hope to see you soon again in the next video. Stay healthy, save the future, take care. See you then. Ciao, ciao.